What up, hotheads? I'm Henry, and this is Blaze the Roof. This week, we're reviewing a sauce named Marshall's Hot Sauce Whiskey Smoked Ghost. The company is called Marshall's Hot Sauce. It was founded by Sarah Marshall, not the forgetting Sarah Marshall, but... <laughs> Sarah Marshall started this and uh, recruited her husband, Dirk, to help out with it. Every bottle is made by hand. The city it's out of is Portland. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things about Portland, like the fact that they stole Keep Portland Weird from Austin. There's a lot of food trucks there, so the, there's a big foodie culture. And apparently there's a lot of, like, Thai, Vietnamese uh, fusion foods there as well. But let's move on to the famous people. Famous people from here include Matt Groening, who is the creator of The Simpsons and Futurama. Caitlin Olson from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Esmeralda Spaulding, she's a jazz bassist and a very good one at that. And a vocalist. And uh, Sarah Jean Underwood, who's a former playmate. Now let's look at the bottle. So Marshall's Hot Sauce, first of all, this is a paper wrapper. It has some gold and silver foil in it. It's very quite nice. The border is in gold. The lettering is in red foil. And then there's even some more over here. Pretty elegant. Marshalls, the only other sauce I've had from them was the Heatness number no. 6 that they had. Or was it number 5? I forgot which one it was. But on here it says, at Marshalls Hot Sauce, we enjoy a good cocktail and we love an excuse to bring our favorite spirits into the hot sauce kitchen with us. We pass on knowledge through celebrating the art of canning and preserving. Uncle Nearest Whiskey does it through distilling, and we were inspired to develop this smoky, booze-kissed sauce to honor that common ground. Whiskey Smoked Ghost is silky smooth with a fiery bite that keeps us coming back for more. Try it on grilled meats or roasted root vegetables. And Uncle Nearest, I guess, was established in 1856, and they are premium whiskey. All bourbons are whiskey, but not all whiskeys are bourbon. And I do have a special bottle. You should look it up. It's one of the featured ingredients. Looking at the ingredients here then, what we have is apple cider vinegar, white balsamic vinegar, onions, tomato paste, date syrup. Sounds like something that uh, you drink to make yourself more attractive. Uncle Nearest 1856 whiskey, smoked boot jalokia peppers, also known as ghost peppers, kosher salt, and black pepper. I'm expecting this to be a slightly vinegary tomato based sauce. What's going to give the smokiness to this though? Oh, the peppers themselves are smoked. Ooh, this might be like a chipotle on steroids. Our feature this week will be that something, I wanted to pick something because since Portland has a lot of food, right? Like I mentioned, there's Thai, there's uh, Vietnamese. Uh, there's all sorts of food there, but apparently their Dungeness crab is the best in the world. We're going to talk about Dungeness crabs here. They are not found in a dungeon. It is named after a seaport in Washington, these are only found in the North Pacific between California and Alaska. The crab is 25% meat in weight, which makes it one of the more meaty of the crabs. Dungeness crab has all the essential amino acids, and it's low in fat and calories, and it's rich in many nutrients like zinc, manganese, copper, all that stuff. So They are a purplish brown in nature when they're alive. When they're cooked, it becomes a bright orange. They mate from spring through fall, kind of like me, and they are polygamous. Only males are harvested by fisheries. A female crab can store the sperm f for many, many weeks until the eggs are ready. The eggs are fertilized when the, they are pushed or extruded uh, into the abdomen and carried underneath. She'll carry them until they hatch. The babies then swim away and stay in a larval state from anywhere from four months to a year. The sexual maturity of these crabs, they usually hit it at about year three, and they live between 8 and 13 years. Their diets consist of shrimp, mussels, small crabs, clams, and worms. They are bottom feeders. Before we get any further, let's hear from this week's sponsor. I've always wanted to combine my love of pastries with my love of horror movies, especially the Hellraiser franchise. That's why I created Cinnabites. Try such delicious treats as our Hell Raisin Cinnamon Bun. These treats will have you chattering and have you stuffing your face in no time. Don't be a pinhead and get down to Cinnabites now. You'll raise hell for these delectable bites. Now for the moment of truth. You can smell the vinegar in this. And uh, some sweetness. 
And I wonder if we're going to get a little bit of the bourbon. These are reddish brown. Shit, I just spilled on my computer, but it's fine. It'll be okay. All right, here we go. Cheers. Hmm. So it's a very watery sauce. Oh, man, it's creeping up. Oh, that is actually hotter than I thought it would be. Mm, the ghost is still coming up slowly but surely. The sauce is more vinegary than anything else. I don't really taste too much smokiness. And there's a little edge of sweetness on the back end. I feel like I want to um, hiccup, but... So it might almost be heavyweight, but... It's a very tasty sauce. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I wish it had more smokiness in it. This will still do in a pinch. What would I put it on? So it's not too sweet. It's vinegary. I mean, you could basically put this on... It's kind of interesting. It says like the, the grilled meats. I don't think this, this would go good on steak. If you mix it because of the vinegar... And you have a very vinegar forward, or if you like a vinegar forward hot uh, barbecue sauce, maybe you could mix this in with a sweeter barbecue sauce and kind of get a mixture of both. Yeah, you can mix this with like baby rays and make it a little bit more, a uh, little hotter and a little bit more uh, tart. And yeah, veggies. It's interesting they mention root vegetables. So I guess, I'm guessing like, you know, carrots, tubers, I guess potatoes. I don't know. That sounds like stuff you put in a roast. So I guess if you could put this on a roast, which I could see that. Pork and chicken, I mean, you could put, basically put anything on those. Uh, although I don't see this going on those as easily as some other sauces. So I am sweating here. <laughs> it's a good sauce. Uh, I've had, like I said, I've had one of their other sauces before. They do more like artisanal sauces. The whiskey, you can't really taste at all in this. Would I buy this sauce? I'm going to use it, but it's not like something I go out of my way to get, right? It's not like, oh, a must have. So I would, I would use this, so we'll say a hold. It's tasty though, but again, I, I would have liked to add a little bit more of a, a smoky flavor to it, especially, and a little bit more of a actual, bur like, whiskey taste to it, right? Yeah, it didn't really come through that much, so. Next week, I'll be reviewing a sauce named Diablo's Power Jab. Until then, I'm Henry, and remember, spice up your life. Take care.